Hello and welcome to the first lesson of our module about the Carian. My name is Jär Karling. I am associate professor in linguistics at Lund University and I've also been working uh, with Tocharian. And in this video I will give you a general introduction to the where and the when of Tocharian. Tocharian was spoken in the region known as Eastern Central Asia, which today goes by the name of the Uyghur Autonomous Region of Xinjiang of the People's Republic of China. It is a very desolated region with a harsh climate. The capital of the region, Urumqi, uh, has a very special record. It's the city of the world that is located most far away from any ocean. So therefore we talk about an extreme inland climate combined with low rainfall and large differences in elevation. Geographically, the region is divided into five or six main regions. We have the Alasha Plateau and the Hexi Corridor in the east, the Tarim Basin, the Tianshan Mountains, the Turfanhami area and the Yunge Basin in the north. In this area there are relatively few natural passages and an important pathway uh, in ancient times was the Silk Road, which is marked by red here. Uh, on the map, and it passed through the area. The area covers about one-fourth of China's surface, but it has only two percentages of its population. So, we have the Alasha Plateau in the west, has an altitude of between 2,000 to 2,500 meters. The Hexi Corridor, is a passage between China and East and Central Asia. Then we have the Yunge Basin in the north, and it's somewhat lower than the Alasha Plateau. The Tian Shan Mountains have an altitude between 1,000 and 4,200 meters, and they include uh, 7,000 glaciers and around 200 rivers. The Tarim Basin is a diamond-shaped basin with an extremely low rainfall, less than 90 millimeters a year. And then we have the Turfanhami area, here, which has also an extremely low rainfall, extreme temperatures between uh, 50 uh, above and 50 below uh, Celsius, and then the Turfan Depression has an altitude of 150 meters below the surface of the ocean. And finally, in the south, we have the Kunlun and Alton Mountains here. So, the preconditions for living are extremely harsh, with a dry climate, low rainfall, salty desert, and large temperature changes. There are, traditionally and historically, two main types of human settlement. Resident farmers subsiding on irrigation farming and small-scale industry in the oasis, historically also tax collecting along the Silk Road, and sheep pastoralists in the peripheral areas, basically the gra uh, grass-covered mountain slopes. To overview the environmental structures which are important to the preservation of materials as well as the island structures uh, of the language, we have large resistance in topography, which means high mountains, deserts, and this prevents migration and creates island effects. The oasis towns are naturally, which means without trade connections, isolated from each other with little settlement in between. There are natural preconditions for two subsistence types, farming settlements with irrigation and pastoralism with relatively different social structures between them. In this area, French, Prussian and Russian expeditions discovered the Tocharian language more than 100 years ago. Tocharian was identified as an Indopian language in 1908. It consists of two closely related languages, Tocharian A or East Tocharian, Agnian, and they call themselves the Arshi, which means the brilliant ones. 
Antokaryan B or Westokaryan or Kuchan, and the endonym is Tokaryan B, Kushinye. The name Tokaryan is potentially a misnomer, suggesting a connection to the Toharoi of antique sources, which was a tribe living in the region of Bactria, and maybe they spoke an Iranian language, but we don't know for sure. So texts in Tokaryan are found from the period of the 4th to the 12th century common era. Earlier than that, we have description of the region from Chinese sources. Sources from the Han Dynasty, 206 before Common Era to 9 Common Era, such as the Han Shu, which is an a description of the Western Han Dynasty from the 1st century uh, before Common Era. Uh, and this source describes several kingdoms in Xinjiang. The most important cities are, first, Kashgar. Kashgar has a population of 18,600, according to Hanshu, and is a Chinese garrison town under the Han Dynasty. Kutcha is an important city for holding the northern arm along the Silk Road against the northern tribes. The population, according to the Hanshu, is 81,000, of which uh, 21,000 soldiers. It was a Chinese garrison city under the Tang Dynasty, and it fell under Uyghur control in the 9th century. Khotan. Uh, it has a population of 19,000, according to the Hanshu, and it was a Chinese garrison city uh, in 648 Common Era. And finally, Kroran, or Kroraina or Lulan, it uh, was a Chinese garrison city in 77 before Common Era, and according to Hanshu, it has a population of 14,000. Chinese sources identify several nomadic or barbaric tribes in the north, which are the Hyungnu and Yexi and Wusun. The Yexi and Wusun are described as red-haired and green-eyed, and they could potentially be Tokarians. The lifestyle is nomadic, and they dwell in Gansu, uh, which means the Alasha Plateau and the Hexi Corridor. However, the Yesi and Wusun were pushed out of Gansu by the Hyongnu, and they migrated to the Amudaria region via Qingqiang. So, who were the Tokarians? As we know them from various sources. Uh, most importantly, they were Buddhists. And most texts that we have, both in Tokarian A and Tokarian B, are of some kind of Buddhist content. There was a Tokarian monk, uh, whose name was Kumara Jiva, and he came around 400 common era to Shangan, which was the capital of the later Xing dynasty, and he translated Buddhist texts from Sanskrit and Tokarian into Chinese. So, Kumara Jiva was a very important figure in the translation of Buddhist texts into Chinese. However, the Tokarians, they were also warriors, and they were farmers, as well as traders. An important source of income to, uh, in Tokarian, or to Tokarians, was the collection of taxes from caravans passing along the Silk Road. So, we know that they were warriors because we have depictions of Tokarian noblemen or knights, and they were donors to uh, the communities. And we have texts that count men in villages for military service. We know that they were farmers, of course. We have archaeological remains of irrigation farming. And uh, monks were dependent on alms uh, or donations from farmers in order to eat and live. We also know that they were traders. We have several texts that are business letters and ca uh, caravan passes that describe how tax is collected from caravans passing along the Silk Road. The region is very rich in archaeological remains, basically because of the climate. However, in order to trace the origin of the Tokarians, we have to look outside of the Tarim Basin and basically to, to the north. 
There are two Bronze Age cultures of importance that are relevant here. First, we have the Andronovo cultural complex. And it's a culture which is located north of the so-called BMAC culture. And it stands for the Bactria Magiana cultural complex. The Andronovo people were mobile pastoralists. And traditionally, the Andronova people have been identified with Iranians. However, studies of the ancient DNA indicate that they uh, were more similar to the corded ware people of Europe, uh, which has a larger percentage of Neolithic farming DNA. The other culture of importance is the Afanasievo culture. And uh, many archaeologists identify uh, Afanasievo with the proto tocharians The Afanasievo people were pastoralists with cattle, sheep and domestic horses. And the culture shows large similarities with the Yamna culture of uh, Central Europe or Ukraine. And the DNA of the Afanasievo people are more similar to Yamna than the Corded Ware people of uh, Northern Europe. The region of Xinjiang itself is, as I said, rich in archaeological remains and the most spectacular, uh, spectacular remnants of the uh, region are the so-called Terry mummies, which represent naturally mummified corpses of people that were buried in the salty desert during the winter time. The archaeological remnants stretch far back in time uh, and studies of the DNA of the mummies indicate a correlation with the Yamna people but basically on the paternal side. Uh, but they also show a large mixture or admixture uh, of the Andronovo cultural complex. So this here is a map uh, of Tocharian A, B and C. So we have Tocharian A here. We have Tocharian B here. And we have Tocharian C here. But as I said before, Tocharian C is only attested in Prakrit documents by means of loans uh, in Prakrit. So there are no real proper texts in Tocharian C. In this lesson, we have been looking at the background, including the geographical, archaeological and historical sources for the area and the culture where Tocharian was spoken. In the next lesson of this introduction, we will uh, look at language contact issues in Tocharian as well as in adjacent languages.